is Tyler Tatusis, and I'm here for a special edition of ResX here at the Think Indigenous Conference. Let's get the show started. an indigenous lifestyle show for everybody. My name is Tyler Tatusis. I'm your co-host. Unfortunately, my other co-host, Aaron Goodpipe, could not make it today. And wherever you are today, Aaron, I hope you're having a good day. We're here at the Think Indigenous Conference at the luxurious Saskatoon Inn, full of beautiful indigenous people and wonderful indigenous knowledge. Sponsored by the ITEP program at the University of Saskatchewan, where we are going to listen to some of the great wisdom, stories that are shared here today all about the indigenous perspective in education and we're hoping to gain some of that knowledge and share it with the people i myself and an itep student and then coming together with everybody here it's like coming together with a big family a family reunion of educators indigenous educators and there ain't nothing more beautiful than that on a day like this so with that we hope and we will go out there and gain some of that knowledge and listen to some of the stories and have a great day. territories, uh, also other other treaty sixes. We got a friend, my friend here, Francois Paulette, he's from up north. Treaty 8, eh? He's a Treaty 8 chief over there, this friend of mine. He's got lots of money, that's why he's my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so to the conference committee of Think Indigenous, I, I share with you my most sincere congratulations. This is just another success, third year running. To have over 900 people registered here, that tells you something, that people are interested in cultural education, coming together to share ideas, thoughts, stories, laughter. Yeah, that's, that's a, a good way. Uh, just overwhelmed by uh, a the, the people that came, uh, the knowledge shared. Also, just um, you know, really uh, super exhausted. You know, I mean, it's a lot of work to prepare some of this, and but we got an amazing team. I think uh, it's been extremely positive. There's been such good things that have uh, happened, and uh, a really good uh, experience for a lot of educators. Uh, uh, and the conversations I've had, you know, of course, <laughs> you know, I'm the conference chair for Think Indigenous. So, of course, people are going to tell me all the good things. Uh, but I've been sneaking up on people and kind of listening to conversations. It's, always, it's mostly been positive. Uh, people are talking about the good things that are happening. Amazing speakers and the knowledge shared. It really, um, putting this together, it really uh, uh, amplifies how uh, amazing our knowledge is that, that uh, our people possess. And it's them that make this conference wicked and make it uh, uh, an enjoyable experience. So. What I'm celebrating is the next 150 years. All that we are able to do, all that we can do. That's the promise that I see here in this room today that I've been hearing sitting at the back of the room is the ideas, the opportunities that exist, and the chance for us to come together as as folks who have been teaching for, for many decades, who have experience in what works and what doesn't, who have knowledge and who have caring, mixed with that youthful idealism 
of new teachers, the ones who have recently convocated, the ones who are here to learn everything they can, but also to share what they know. This is what I see in the opportunity that exists today. The experience here has been phenomenal. I know when I leave here, I'm gonna leave on this indigenous high, and I know everybody else here is probably gonna leave on this. I know you're not gonna feel tired because you're gonna be like, this was amazing and can't wait for next year. Are you tired at all or feel a little bit fatigued? You know, this this year, um, I have I felt like I had a lot more energy uh, for how we're how we're gonna do this. You know, I, I prepared myself mentally to make sure that we uh, we uh, do the work, but um, listening to this and what's been shared here you know it's it is energizing you know it is uh, hopeful you know like um, we have such uh, 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 tough situations that we deal with with our kids in our schools and we face those every day and seeing these people and hearing the conversations and hearing the people talk it gives me hope and that uplifts me and it gives me energy and um, you know I just want to say like holy smokes how do we just okay we're here I'm inspired Let's get back into it. Let's go back to the work, you know. Uh, so it is, it is. Continuing on at the Think Indigenous Conference, and we're going to go out there and ask the people, how do they think Indigenous? with ResX TV here. I'm here with Pat Bugler. So Pat, when it comes to education, how do you think Indigenous? Oh, that's, that's a tough one. I think when we look at edu in education, we have to uh, focus on and foundation, creating a foundation of, uh, of Indigenous uh, learning first before we connect curriculum to it. So that's, that's how I do it, I guess. Yeah. When it comes to thinking Indigenous, how do you go about it, sir, when it comes to education? I just think, uh, I mean, in tonight I was speaking and I really wanted to get that point across that it's a, it's about the living, it's about the experiences and when I share, or when I work with youth in the present at, at, as a professor at the university, I always want to get us to think about the living, about the experiences, about the geography of place. Excellent. So Jojo, when it comes to education, how do you think Indigenous? When it comes to education, the Think Indigenous is basically going back to the land where your feet first touch the ground. Word. Um, and that's, that's the big step right there. That's and the first step, right? Yeah, exactly. Are you enjoying yourself today? Very much so. I had a leadership uh, some I was leadership cohort today and I had some great speakers, a great panel, and I really enjoyed myself. Thank you very much, Pat. It's been a pleasure seeing you again, my friend. You have a good day. So when you were talking there in the auditorium, I heard you talking about some gentlemen that are in the forefront right now that you can that you went to school here with. How was that like? So way back when, you know, and it tells you how important a, a program like the Indian Teacher Edu Education Program is and, and that we need to continue to uh, to advocate for programs like this because it's so important because you never, if, unless you get an opportunity, you never know uh, where, where people are going to go. Um, in those early years, I, I spent time with, with uh, two, two people who became fast friends and uh, former Chief Sheldon Whitney, who's, uh, who's done a lot of things in Saskatchewan and beyond, and uh, also my good friend Dion Tatusis, who, who continues to, uh, to, to lead in another way. So, uh, and, and those are just two examples of many of people that I've run into over, um, you, you never know who you're gonna meet in a classroom, and you never know where we're all gonna go in these, these different trajectories. So thank goodness for the Indian Teacher Education Program that we had a place so we could learn together. My name is Kelly Asuka, and I go to school at Saskatchewan Indian Institute of Technologies. I'm from Thunder Child First Nation. The SEGA scholarship for me brought a lot of value. Just got inspired and motivated and that's what the scholarship really did was inspire me. They're investing in, in people and I think SEGA truly helps communities in Saskatchewan. Access 7 Sports, bringing sports to you. For all of your local sports, tune to Access 7. Visit myaccess.ca slash access7 for full schedule details. 
Welcome back to another special episode. We are here at the Think Indigenous Conference, and one of the series of events that they host is something called Red Talks, where they have some excellent Indigenous speakers talking about issues related to Indigenous education. Let's go back there and check it out before everything's over. Let's go. Right now. for taking the time to listen this afternoon. Indigenous young people, there's a higher number of Indigenous young people wanting to commit suicide and kill themselves rather than the rate of young Indigenous people loving themselves. And that in itself is absolutely terrifying. We see it constantly in our communities over and over again and with many of the students that you work with, in a lot of the schools that I've been in, and a lot of the communities that I worked with. Our young people are living in a place of pain. And the place of pain that they're living in is one that resides specifically in, and predominantly with colonialism, colonization. And it is because of colonization where our family systems and our kinship model has dramatically changed. It has been dramatically altered to such an extent where our families are operating like non-Indigenous families, day in and day out. And this is very troubling to me. This is very troubling to me and my partner. This is very troubling to, to our, our nations as a whole. We are now operating at a, a, a place where, where we are oppressing our children, where children are seen as lesser than where we as adults can dictate how a children can play, where a children can play, a child can play, how a child can express their emotions. We dictate every detail of a child's life, of their lived experience, rather than the, 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 the true reality of, of how we used to operate in our families, of letting them grow and learn on the land letting them grow and learn with their mushrooms and their cookums, free of that dictatorship, free of those co colonial ideologies that we now see embedded deeply in our families. So we're living in a society today, as Indigenous nations, as Indigenous peoples, as Indigenous families, where we decide how we operate based on the concept of reward versus punishment. So how we live our lives, how we carry ourselves, how we carry ourselves in our jobs, even if we're working for the colonial government, if we want to be rewarded or if we want to be punished. If we defy the system, we're punished. If we follow the system, we're rewarded. If you're born a white male, you're rewarded. If you're born an indigenous woman, you are punished automatically. It's my great pleasure to welcome one of our most respected leaders we've known in our time to be alive, Mr. Francois Paulette, ladies and gentlemen. But where I come from, I come from a time of where I was raised in a bush. I'm a bush Denny. I grew up in a time where I've learned how to track moves, call moves. <laughs> I came in a time where I can tell the difference between a moose that came by that was a bull moose, the age of the bull moose, and the other one was a cow, whether it was a dry cow, the age of the cow. That's how I was trained. But now in the city, if there is fresh snowfall, I'm always looking at the snow, and if there is a track with one heel, 
And I said, oh, that's a young woman that came by here. <laughs> And she's probably about 120 pounds. <laughs> yeah, just a skill that you begin to, you begin to learn. <laughs> I, I've learned a lot of things from my father, from my family, because a family unit in, the, in a community is what makes that community function your grandmothers, your grandparents. But at a young age, I knew that I was, I was going to become a leader, a chief, because my father, his father, is in my DNA, it's in my blood. But before I became a chief, I. Uh, I was an architect draftsman. I designed buildings. And I, I just wanted to share this story. It was in the spring, and I was in some, some community, and I was there designing a building for them. And a young man came in, young man came in and brought me a note. And the note was just, in those days, it's called a telex. And the note just simply said, Francois, you are now the chief of the Fifth Smith Indian Band. Come home. <laughs> Whoa. OK. So I went home, and I took the role as, because I'm not a, I was not an elected chief. I took on that role. Then in 72, we filed a caveat against Canada for taking our land. I'm not sure if everybody speaks Cree, but uh, the one word that you always have to try and uh, knock off is to make sure you, you know how to really pronounce the T in Tansa. That it's not sharp, you, you, you drag it. So I, I want everybody to say, Tanse. Very good, thank you very much. I want to first say, uh, it's very humbling to be here. I want to say thank you very much to the organizers that have, that have blessed me with a, uh, a phone call to, to help out here in the best way I can. And very humbled to be in the presence of so many educators. Before I moved on to be anything, I was a teacher, and before I was a teacher, I always prioritized the relationships that we have as human beings. And I think that's what I would like to share today with our educators. It's you don't need to be afraid. So many people come to these conferences because they don't know how to connect with the student or they don't know how to teach native studies, or they don't know how to broach very sensitive topics, such as the res uh, residential school systems, the past systems, you know, they, the, the legislation that have uh, segregated and oppressed many of our Aboriginal people. And I just wanted to provide a couple tools that I've been able to use ever since that I was a young man. But in order for me to qualify and to really connect with you how important relationships are, I feel it's important that I share a little bit of my story. Hide scraper. We need more wood for this fire. Now let's get out there and ask the people more questions at the Think Indigenous Conference. Say, Muck, let's get out there right now. <laughs> Hurry up, let's go! <laughs> <laughs> So, what brings you to Think Indigenous? I'm an employee with Pie Pot School, and we came to this conference so that we can learn more uh, ways to think Indigenous by exploring different worldviews and perspectives on different Indigenous people. Excellent. So, what brings you to Think Indigenous? 
Well, it's an awesome conference, and this year I um, applied to present, and I was I just finished my presentation. So, what brings you to Think Indigenous? Hi, I'm here to take part and support the sharing of knowledge of all different groups of community. So when it comes to Indigenous education, how do you think Indigenous? I think I'm Indigenous by incorporating different worldviews within my classroom, discussing the uh, historical and intergenerational trauma of residential schools, also uh, learning how those treaties have not been fulfilled yet, mm -hmm. and trying to um, walk in good ways so that we can try to advocate for um, the treaty treaties to be um, fulfilled. So when it comes to Indigenous education, how do you think Indigenous? I think in my language first, um, because I'm a Cree spe speaker, it was taught to me by my grandparents, and in that language, the stories that go with it, um, that they wanted to pass on to me, and so that gives me an identity, and it, and it helps me um, understand the world around me, and, and, and I want to share that. I want to share that with the young people. I want to share that with uh, fellow educators. So when it comes to indigenous, indigenous education, how do you think Indigenous? I guess it depends on how each of us determine what Indigenous means to us. So for myself is my culture, land, language, and community of where I'm from. Ooh, that was really good. Thank you very much, Christine. Thank you. We're here at the home fire of the Think Indigenous Conference. I cut all that wood there with these hands, hard work, determination. So you check out some messages from our sponsors. We got more Res X coming right up. I'm Phil Andrews. And I'm Jared Dumba. For the latest news, interviews, and highlights, watch Pats TV. Join us each week, Wednesdays at seven o'clock, only on Access 7. Brought to you by Cameron Okalita, improving lives through debt solutions for over 20 years. Give them a call today for your free consultation. Pats TV, only on Access 7. SEGA contributes to community development corporations, which in turn invest in local communities. We had to put in new digital mammography equipment. It detects some cancers earlier. We double the capacity of the dialysis program. SEGA helps us to change lives. I used to drive to Regina three times a week, and now I get to stay with my family, and it's changed my life for the better. Welcome back to ResX at the Think Indigenous Conference, where we have very Indigenous keynote speakers like my man, Ryan McMahon himself, who will appear in this empty chair right now. Tanse, I'm here with Ryan McMahon at the Think Indigenous Conference. So Ryan, what brings you to Think Indigenous? Well, last night we screened uh, Colonization Road as part of the uh, as part of the opening ceremonies, and uh, I was here today to help uh, moderate a couple of panels and uh, do some uh, recording for my podcast, uh, Red Man Laughing. And uh, tomorrow I'm uh, I'm the host of and the producer of the Red Talks, which are uh, short 20-minute uh, uh, talks, uh, disc you know, discovering new ideas about. Uh, Indigenous education and uh, this is our third year doing the Red Talks. Um, you know for me what I'm doing here what I'm most excited about is to be able to uh, watch my uh, sons swim. Uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, there's, we can't ignore all these these kids. There's no parents to be found here by the way. Uh, once again we have a packed oversold conference and uh, yeah, it's been a good it's been a good day. I was at the screening of your show last night. It was really interesting. And my wife was there also. Wit really blew us away last night. I really admire you, uh, the way you look at it. 
and how you say it's not your own and that you just share it because my my late grandfather he did the same thing well similar he traveled throughout the areas and different different territories and different reserves and different peoples and one thing he'd do is he'd seek out the storyteller in each community all the time and he'd go and sit and visit for hours upon yeah. hours yeah and I mean uh, <coughs> I, I have uh, a lot of respect for your family a lot of respect for your grand your late grandfather and uh, he's a teacher of mine too and um, you know I only ever ever got to work with him in a professional capacity twice but boy I, I can tell you boy those those two times were fundamental in my in my approach to this work and uh, the private conversations we were able to have when he was with us in this physical journey um, I really benefited from you know he, he talked a lot about uh, seeking out those voices and, and not being afraid to uh, to, to, to really have to work hard to find those voices it's that's why that's why we're, we're seeing such a resurgence of, of indigenous voices right now so um, we're very we're very lucky to be here yeah Ryan you don't even know I feel lucky to be sitting here right now listening to you have no idea how you've just blown away I, I appreciate everything you say about my family dude I think I think we got a hug I'll hug you. Okay, I'll hug you are too. We gonna, are we, I think we'll just the hug. The camera's gonna roll. The camera's gonna roll. We'll just hug, bro. Can you zoom in? Can we are zoom in? Zoom in. I think zoom we up, zoom, zoom in. in. Like a bromance deal. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> it feels like you're my family, man. Well, I, listen. The, the the thing the thing about all this work is we are family, and uh, I think that's the great the great failure of the Indian Act. The great yeah. failure of 150 years of this country is uh, is that it didn't destroy that that relationship. It didn't that's destroy. True. I mean. Man, what a what a failure on, on the government. You, the government should be ashamed how bad they failed at killing us. You know, exactly. and uh, keep doing what you're doing. You know, ResX is a big is a big uh, contributor to the to the health and wellness of our people, and it's it's our stories. It's it's the mainstream hearing our stories and hearing our voices. This is the, we'll go further faster doing this mm -hmm. than we will with any uh, politician yeah. trying to make change in Ottawa. This this is this is the movement yeah. this is the revolution is uh, using our own voice to tell our own stories so keep up the good work thank you yeah, man. you yeah. have a good day today uh, safe travels wherever you go to throughout the land thanks brother thank you it's been a very indigenous conference here a lot of knowledge wisdom stories and history has been shared we've seen many great speakers many great booths behind us too and met many wonderful people we'd like to thank the organizers of the think indigenous for allowing us to be here and taking part of this unique conference here at the saskatoon inn we'd like to thank our sponsors saskatchewan indian gaming authority and resex and the viewers as well and we'd like to wish everybody farewell on their journeys home to their home fires where they take the knowledge that has been shared here and shared amongst the youth, the indigenous youth, and non-indigenous youth, who are the ones who will benefit from the knowledge which has been shared here at the conference. We'd also like to send a shout out to all the viewers who are watching right now and encourage you to attend the next Think Indigenous here in Saskatoon. It'll be a phenomenal experience for you and you'll leave here with knowledge that makes you feel better about being an Indigenous person and having Indigenous knowledge. We hope the viewers are enjoying this episode as well. Thank you very much. Farewell.